Hello everybody, I'm back. Uh, it's been a little longer than I was anticipating, but uh, I am back to do, I suppose, essentially a second part of a, a couple of Oregon whiskies because if you watch my last uh, review, which was Bull Run, um, you would have uh, remembered that I mentioned uh, another Oregon based whiskey called uh, Westwood, and uh, this was a sample that was kindly donated to me uh, by there's no picture because I can't find one of him, uh, of Pete James, um, who also sent me the bull run as well. Now I do have a little bit of the bull run left um, to be able to basically compare and contrast the two of them. Um, uh, and the, the reason that the, I wanted to follow on was uh, Westwood was actually set up uh, originally, um, or the company that owned Westwood, uh, which is a company called House Spirits, uh, was set up by um, the now owner of Bull Run uh, Distilling, uh, Lee Medoff, uh, and another guy called Christian Krogstadt, or Krogstadt. Uh, here's a picture of the two of them together in happier times. Um, Lee left uh, House Spirits in 2010, and from what I gather, I think it was an amicable split, um, but what's interesting now is if you look at any press, um, any sort of reviews or articles about House spirits um, everything talks about Christian Lee isn't mentioned whatsoever apart from one or two odd um, exceptions the impression that's given is that house spirits is purely Christian's company and he was the one that set it up um, so uh, house spirits set up in 2004 um, now the intention was actually that they were always going to produce whiskey now the reason that Lee left um, was he wanted to concentrate on whiskey making one of the interviews I read about him was he wanted to focus on um, um, whiskey, whereas House Spirits um, actually came up with Aviation Gin, which is a very, very popular gin brand. I believe they've now sold it, um, but essentially the gin was um, a, a, an income a, a revenue stream um, while they were um, in the process of kind of maturing whiskies, etc., etc. But Aviation took off. It's a gin. It's incredibly popular now, uh, and it took off and and made them loads and loads of money. Um, but according to a, an interview that I've, I've just read with Christian, and here's a picture of Christian on his own. Um, the intention was always to uh, to make whiskey, which kind of doesn't quite fit with the stories that are coming from Lee. So my guess is that the the, the relation, the split up, the relationship's good, but the split up wasn't as amicable as maybe uh, people would want to make out. Um, so anyway, uh, this particular one is Westwood. Um, it's got nothing to do with Tim Westwood, um, who is, if uh, you don't know who he is, he is a, I think he was a son of a uh, a vicar or a preacher who is quite famous in Britain for being a, a white guy that desperately, desperately wants to be black. Um, he is quite, uh, he's, he's known for kind of being very big in the hip hop scene. Um, and some people would also almost say that he was responsible for the growth of hip hop in, in, in the UK um, about, I don't know, I'm going to say 10, 15, maybe even 20 years ago. Um, but he is like, he's literally a white guy that even talks like he's from the, you know, Bronx. It's just desperate, desperately wants to be black. Um, it's also nothing to do with Westworld, which is uh, a TV show that is apparently very, very good and I just haven't got around to seeing it yet, but fully intend to. This is West Ward um, and nothing to do with Starwood either, which is the Australian whiskey that I've covered before. So uh, Westwood um, was uh, set up in a, originally in a place called Corvallis, uh, which is in Oregon. They then moved to a, a place called, it's known as Distillery Row. Um, it's essentially a, a small part of Portland where there's about five or six kind of crafty distilleries, um, all very close together. It's kind of hipsterish, it's quite expensive, but you know, it's, it's one of these places where that's, if you're trying to be new and funky and interesting, that's where you go. There's, there's a lot of tape on here, Pete. This is very, very well packaged. So let's get there eventually. Um, so this is the Westwood straight malt. Now things are gonna get a bit confusing because if you want to Google this, there is a Westwood straight malt, which is this one. Um, it's a small batch and I think it might be single um, single casks. So this is uh, batch 30, it's a two year old. Um, and apparently Christian deliberately wants to make young whiskies. That's what he prefers. Um, they also have the Westwood single malt as well, not the straight malt. That is, uh, I think it's a 75 CL bottle, which is about $80. The straight malt, which is this one, which is the small batch, is a, a 35 CL, and you're looking at about $50, $60. So it's not cheap. Um, having said that, the 75 CL is not that cheap either. Um, I don't know what the difference is between the two, because it is 100% malted barley from um, the Pacific Northwest. Um, it's 
Uh, it uses uh, ale yeasts and it's fermented for about five to seven days, which is a pretty long fermentation compared to most other places, particularly American whiskey. Um, a lot of places make a point of talking, or a lot, a lot of articles about it make a, a point of talking about the fact that it's, um, it uses uh, pot stills to mature. It doesn't use the pot still technique, although I did read one place where it said it was, uh, what, is, what was the quote? It was inspired by Irish tradition, which if, you, if you're using the pot still technique, you're using unmalted barley as well as malted barley. But everywhere else I'm reading is just saying it's using copper pot stills, which is traditional stills rather than column stills or anything like that. So there's a bit of muddled kind of thinking around what's going on here. My guess is that it's 100% malted barley, um, it's using ale yeast, and they are double distilling it in standard pot stills. That's about it. I don't think they're using unmalted barley in this. Um, I haven't got my jigger. No, it's disappeared, so I shall just free pour because um, this is slightly high, bigger, higher, bigger than a 25 mil. Um, but like I say, I do have a little bit of the bull run left because this is also single malt and I think ale yeast as well. So it'll be very interesting to see what the difference is between the two. I quite like bull run, it was quite unusual. Pete actually came back with a really good tasting, uh, tasting note that it smelled of weed, which it did. It kind of had that weird beery character in it. So I don't want to prejudge this, but it's entirely possible that this might have a similar vibe to it as well. So, color wise, I do have a bit of cloth now that I can use. Looks a bit orangey, it's more orangey than I can see on the screen, but it's, well, yeah, there is a kind of oranginess to it, actually. It's, um, yeah, kind of orangey amber on the nose. Sorry, I should have said this is 45% ABV as well on the nose. Classical American whiskey. Not so much of the beery character, the hoppy character that was in the bull run, because that was really distinctive. There's a touch of sourdough on this, but there is a vanillin character to it. Now, I can't remember reading it anywhere in terms of exactly what the casks were, but I'm assuming that they were a virgin American oak, rather than, it didn't make any point of saying it was, you know, sherry cask or anything like that. So this will, I, I'm gonna stick my neck out and say this is this is virgin oak. And there's that classic American vanilla bourbon-y character that you get from that vanilla, um, that uh, uh, virgin oak maturation. It's a very, very American whiskey vibe. Um, there's nothing to me that is making this stand out like the Bull Run did. It's just, it, it's what I like in American whiskey. It's it's a nose that I really like. Um, there's just not a anything that stands out. So uh, I'm trying to think about if I was trying this blind, I would say it's an American whiskey. What is it? Not a clue. It's an American whiskey. That's about as good as I can get. But this sourdoughy element to it would make me would suggest to me that there was probably some rye involved, and obviously this is 100% single malt, so it's kind of interesting that it's got that slightly sour edge to it. There is a bit of a juiciness to it as well. It's a nice nose. Um, it's a little bit sharper than I would have expected for 45. But I'm liking it. It's not wowing me, but I'm liking it. It's also quite young as well. It's only a two-year-old. Oh, on the palate you can tell it's two-year-old. It's really tight. It's really a little bit fiery. I would have, again, if I was trying this blind, I would have said it was slightly higher than 45 possibly 48, not cast strength. Dies away a little bit quickly at the end, but there's a good character to it. It's quite nicely rounded. It's not particularly full in the mouth, and it does thin out a little bit, kind of like three quarters of the way, and then the bite comes back in. But Again, there's, no, well, there's nothing, again, kind of particularly outstanding about it. I do get a touch of hops. I do get a little touch of a hoppiness to it. And it's almost like a slightly soury element of an IPA or something like that. Now, I'm not a massive fan of IPAs. There is a, a sour element to IPA that I just I don't really get on with. 
and there is a touch of it there, but it's not too overpowering. I'm also getting a bit of, coming through on the finish now, pomegranate, of all things, weirdly. There is a definite, slightly mouth-watering, juicy element to it, which is slightly reminiscent of when I've had Irish whiskies that have that pot still unmalted barley element. So it's now making me think, have they actually done that? But they don't really mention it. They don't really, you'd think they'd shout about that more if it was an American whiskey that was using unmalted barley, but nowhere says it explicitly. The nose is, the nose is good, but not outstanding. It's a very classic American whiskey nose. It's one where instantly you go, yeah, that's American. That's definitely American. Yeah, pomegranate is really coming through. There is a juicy sharpness to it, which is maybe even a touch of cranberry as well. Or even if you get to um, Ikea uh, and you do the old uh, meatballs and gravy and their cream sauce thing, the lingonberry, lingonberry jam that they have as well. There's a lingonberry jamminess to it, but the youth is slightly overpowering. I'd be very interested to see what this is like at like four, five year old. Two is almost slightly too young. But it doesn't feel like there's enough body for it to particularly last past 10. But I think just a couple of, a year or two or three, not much, would actually really, really lift this up. Because there's some cracking flavors in there. It's very, very interesting. It's more interesting on the palate than it is on the nose. Mm. I'm very intrigued by that. That that sharp berryness, and it, you know, normally when you say red berries, you're talking kind of red currants and and red fruit, but also a bit more kind of darker red fruits. This is sharp red fruit. This is like I say, lingonberry, cranberry, pomegranate. That sort of juicy but quite tanging um, feel to it. Now I'm going to put a bit of the bull run in another glass because I did want to uh, to compare the two. But I'd be very interested to see how the two go because I thought they might be quite similar. And just based on my recollection of when I had Bull Run, compared to me having the um, the Westwood now, it's they're quite different. Yeah, see, Bull Run, Bull Run has that much more beery element, whereas this is more vanilla. This is definitely more, yes, this is American, where the Bull Run, oh, I'm not too sure where that's from. I'm really not too sure. There's this very strange note that I imagine would put some people off, whereas with Westwood, you know you're drinking an American whiskey. The problem that I have with it is it doesn't stand out enough from other American whiskies to give it a characteristic of its own. However, that's on the nose. Bull Run, that weird, bready, beery, weed. It is there, it's like, you know when you sort of, you walk past a group of youths and you get that weird kind of sickly sweet smell? It's, it's that. Whereas this, the Westwood, it's sharper. I would have said the Bull Run is older, and I think they're about the same age. Oh no, hang on, no, the Bull Run's four years old. Pardon me. The Bull Run's four years old. The uh, the Westwood is clearly younger. It's sharper, it's zingier, but there is that that really quite intense red curranty, red berry sharpness to it, this juiciness to it. Which one do I prefer? The Bull Run is more interesting. The Westwood is more classical. The Westwood would work better in cocktails, um, and I get the impression that it's been made young with this type, type, type of characteristic to be made with cocktails. The Bull Run is quite distinct, but the Bull Run, I think, would put more people off, whereas the Westwood, I think, is a more classical style and hence would be more popular. But 
yeah I, some people are going to smell that ball run and go oh god no that's absolutely dreadful that's that's awful that's weird what on earth is going on i would much prefer this i like the ball run for its idiosyncrasies i like the westwood for i just want a good american whiskey and it's a good american whiskey it's not outstanding because to be outstanding you have to stand out and it doesn't really do that it just does a decent job of what it is that it's trying to do What I don't know is if there is any difference with the single malt as opposed to the straight malt small batch that Pete sent me. If I can find it somewhere, I will do. I don't think you can find this in the UK. I can't say I've ever come across it. Um, but if you can, it's worth picking up a bottle. If you're out in the States, it is a bit pricey. Looking at the price, I'm like, for the straight malt, about $60 for a 35 mil, 35 CL even, and $80 for a 70 for something so young, yeah, it's it's pushing it. There's there are more interesting American whiskies for eighty dollars, sixty dollars than that. But if you can find it and it's on a deal, or if it's on a tasting, or you get the opportunity to try it, try it. It's it's there's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Right, that's me done. Hopefully it's not going to be as long until my next one. I shall see you in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>